Welcome to our Tenebrae service. The Tenebrae service is known as the service of approaching darkness. Tonight we will hear scripture readings that tell us of the last few moments of Jesus' life. After each reading, a candle will be extinguished and then we'll have a moment of silence to reflect. Then we will have our next reading. This process continues until all the candles are extinguished and we sit and reflect in darkness, the darkness that was in the world as Jesus took his last breath. Our first reading comes from Mark 15, verses 16 to 32. The soldier's words. The soldiers led Jesus inside the courtyard of the fortress and called together the rest of the troops. They put a purple robe on him, and on his head they placed a crown that they had made out of thorn branches. They made fun of Jesus and shouted, Hey you, King of the Jews! Then they beat him on the head with a stick. They spat on him and knelt down and pretended to worship him. When the soldiers had finished making fun of Jesus, they took off the purple robe. They put his own clothes back on him and led him off to be nailed to a cross. Simon of Cyrene happened to be coming in from afar, and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Reading 2, Pilate's words, John 19, verse 7 to 22. Kill him, kill him, they yelled, nail him to a cross. So you want me to nail your king to a cross, Pilate asked. The chief priest replied, the emperor is our king. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be nailed to a cross. Jesus was taken away. And he carried his cross to a place known as the Skull. In Aramaic, this place is called Golgotha. There, Jesus was nailed to the cross. And on each side of him, a man was also nailed to a cross. Pilate ordered the charge against Jesus to be written on a board and put above the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The words were written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The place where Jesus was taken wasn't far from the city, and many of the Jewish people read the charge against him. So the chief priests went to Pilate and said, Why did you write that he is king of the Jews? You should have written he claimed to be king of the Jews. But Pilate told them, What is written will not be changed. What I've written, I've written. Mark chapter 15, verses 25 to 32. The crowd's words. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they nailed him to the cross. On it was a sign that told why he was nailed there. It read, This is the King of the Jews. The soldiers also nailed two criminals on crosses, one to the right of Jesus and the other to his left. People who passed by said terrible things about Jesus. They shook their heads and shouted, Ha! Huh, so you're the one who claimed you could tear down the temple and build it again in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses also 
made fun of Jesus. They said to each other, He saved others, but he can't save himself. If he is the Messiah, the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross. Then we will see and believe. The two criminals also said cruel things to Jesus. John 19, verse 25 to 27, Mary's words. Jesus' mother stood beside his cross with her sister and Mary, the wife of Clopas. Mary Magdalene was standing there too. When Jesus saw his mother and his favorite disciple with her, he said to his mother, This man is now your son. Then he said to the disciple, she is now your mother. From then on, that disciple took her into his own home. Luke 23, verse 39 to 43, the thief's words. One of the criminals joined in the cruel talk. You're supposed to be the anointed one, right? Well, do it. Rescue yourself and us. But the other criminal told him to be quiet. Don't you have any fear of God at all? You're getting the same death sentence he is. We're getting what we deserve since we committed crimes. But this man hasn't done anything wrong at all. Turning to Jesus, he said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, please remember me. Jesus answered, I promise you that this very day you will be with me in paradise. Matthew 27, verse 45 to 50, the bystander's words. At noon the sky turned dark and stayed that way until three o'clock. Then about that time Jesus shouted, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Some of the people standing there heard Jesus and said, He's calling for Elijah. One of them at once ran and grabbed a sponge. He soaked it in wine, then put it on a stick and held it up to Jesus. Others said, wait, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Once again, Jesus shouted, and then...
Matthew 27, verse 51 to 56. At once the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks split apart. Graves opened and many of God's people were raised to life. Then after Jesus had risen to life, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city, where they were seen by many people. The officer and the soldiers guarding Jesus felt the earthquake and saw everything else that happened. They were frightened and said, This man really was God's son. Many women who had come with Jesus from Galilee to be of help to him, and they were there looking on at a distance. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John were some of these women. Matthew 27, verses 57 to 61, Joseph's words. That evening a rich disciple named Joseph from the town of Arimathea went and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave orders for it to be given to Joseph, who took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Then Joseph put the body in his own tomb that had been cut into solid rock, and had never been used. He rolled a big stone against the entrance to the tomb and went away. All this time, Mary Magdalene and the other men were sitting across from the tomb. So we spend a few moments in silence as we consider the lengths to which Jesus would go for us. The darkness we see now is a symbolism of all that is dark in this world. The darkness that Jesus came to shine his light into. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your death you have redeemed the world. Amen.